Welcome to Shiloh Network News with Dr. Scott Stripling. Hi, I'm Dr. Scott Stripling, the Director of the Excavations at Ancient Shiloh for the Associates for Biblical Research. The things that make a dig happen are finances and volunteers, and we're very fortunate to have a consortium of schools that are participating with us, and one of our main members of the consortium is the Center for Holy Land Studies, and I have Jeremy Stein here with me, who's a staff member at CHLS, and Dr. Mark Jenkins, who's a professor at Evangel University, and Jay Herndon, who's a, uh, a leader of one of the districts, is it Northern Nevada? Northern Cal and Nevada. Northern Cal and Nevada. And uh, they brought up several students with them this year. And uh, I just wanted to ask you guys what this experience has been like and what you would say to others who are thinking about joining us. So Mark, let's start with you. Well, it's an awesome experience to me. And uh, typically when students come, the two that I brought with me this year, actually three that I brought this year, I think have uh, fallen in love with it. You know, they, they really see the value in getting their hands dirty, trying to, to see the Bible come alive, mm. you know, when they come in. So. You know, we, we walk a fine line. We're evangelical Christians, right. but we're also doing scientific archaeology. Jeremy, what was the experience like for you guys when you came here? I'm sure you had some expectations. Were they met? They were absolutely met. It was absolutely phenomenal, first of all, to see uh, an evangelical run uh, excavation, um, which is a relative rarity inside the world. Um, to have people who think similarly to you and who are processing mm. things the same way that, that you are, it allows gears to move uh, a little bit smoother uh, just in our understanding and our biblical interpretation. We were absolutely mm. blown away um, when we started participating last year, and I know that um, as we're bringing students, uh, they too are having their lives radically changed by uh, getting their hands dirty and experiencing the Bible firsthand mm. in a way that they've never even dreamed before. You know, all of us, us have our roots in the Assemblies of God. I'm a graduate of ATS, and Mark's a professor at the school, Jay's a district official, you're on staff with CHLS. Um, but it's not just an AG thing. No. I mean, we have people from, from 11 Absolutely. universities that are, that are participating, so it's a dynamic, interdenominational um, uh, enterprise. Where, where what I like to say is we're digging the Bible. Absolutely. <laughs> now, Jay, your situation is really interesting. I mean, you're here on sabbatical. Uh, you and your wife are a little out of the mainstream. You decided we're going to spend our sabbatical di digging here. Um, I'm sure you did some research before you came. How'd you choose um, ABR and the Shiloh dig, and did it beat your expectations? I uh, certainly met my expectations. Uh, we uh, Many years ago, my wife and I decided that in order to get a, a, a better Israel experience, we needed to stay in one spot and really immerse ourselves in that spot. And uh, I enjoy the history, and my wife enjoys the discovery, and so this was a, a good a good marriage. So uh, anyway, I had a personal criteria about uh, archaeological digs. Uh, my personal criteria: we had to have comfortable accommodations, as I'm too old to sleep in tents. Uh, the second thing: I wanted to be a, a site that I had interest in. And obviously, Shiloh has an uh, incredible interest, a very important site. And and the third uh, criteria was that it had to match my calendar date mm. when I was able to come. And so when I looked at, there's probably 25 digs going on in Israel right now. Uh, Shiloh came to the top. ABR is it. Okay. And so uh, we signed up, and uh, we just really enjoyed our time. You know, right behind us, we excavated a palm granite last year right next to this wall. And that palm granite was seen as one of the top finds in Israel uh, for 2018. And in just a few days, there's a major publication that's about to come out on that. You know, that's the type of thing that we, we find here. We're not expecting to find the tabernacle. It was made of animal skins that would have decomposed. But the material culture, the storage rooms right there, the storage jars from the period of the tabernacle, things like palm granites, uh, the bone deposit that we've uncovered, all of this inductively builds a case that the Bible is a reliable historical document. Absolutely. And we'd like to know those that are interested in participating with us, that that's our view, is that the Bible is a reliable historical document. It should be taken, just like we take texts from Egypt and Mesopotamia, uh, seriously, because we don't have anything from Mesopotamia that mentions Shiloh, or Egypt that mentions Shiloh, it's, it's the Bible. And if the Bible is reliable, then we're standing where Hannah stood, where Joshua stood, and Samuel and Eli, and that's pretty awesome. My name is Boyd Severs, and I'm uh, here at Ancient Shiloh reporting for Shiloh Network News. I'm a professor of Old Testament at the University of Northwestern in St. Paul, Minnesota. I've been digging here at Shiloh all three years that ABR has been here, plus I was working with ABR the last two years at Kerbadel McCotter. Uh, when I come to these digs, I always enjoy bringing some of my students with me. 
I'm a professor of Bible and we teach uh, many classes in the Bible, so our students are also interested in the world of the Bible. And here with me again this year are Victoria Dennis, clear over on my left, and then Katie Streckert there in the middle. Uh, they were students of mine in various classes uh, back at the school, plus they're also teaching and research assistants for me. And when I'm in my classes talking about the world of the Bible, I talk about the archaeological dig and then say if anyone is interested, you're welcome to talk with me about coming and both of these gals now are here for the second time. Uh, along with experiencing a dig, you can also research and write about it and both of these gals have also co-authored publications with me about things that we find here at the dig. I've always been interested in archaeology um, and history. Uh, the people in the past, especially biblical archaeology, just because, of course, the stories and the people in the Bible are so important to us as Christians. Um, and I think it's really cool that we can dig our places where the events in the Bible happen. I've always been really, really interested in history, and it's cool to be able to not just read about it, but actually kind of discover it for ourselves and actually see it. I think it's a great idea to come and to bring people here because you see the, the Bible more as a real place. Uh, these, these are real places, these were real people, they experienced real things. Uh, it's hot here in the summer and when I read the stories of Eli and Samuel at the Tabernacle, I don't think about it being hot, but it really is. And so when you see more of the reality of it, then you need to include that. It's helpful to include those kinds of things as we are understanding the Bible. As a student, you do a lot of reading and writing and listening to lectures and sitting in classrooms. and. If you're studying okay, so history honestly, and that's all you get, that can get a little bit What's dry, I think, sometimes. And so I think it's great to, to take the opportunity to come and um, actually have a, a full 3D experience of the history. Last year when uh, the three of us were digging here at Shiloh and here in, the, in this square, one of the things that we found was an inkwell. It was made out of clay, it was kind of poorly made, but it was an intact inkwell from the time of the New Testament. And so uh, from further research uh, with it, for, with Katie here, we learned that it's now one of 30 inkwells from the time of the New Testament that have been found in Israel and Jordan. And so we've co-authored a paper, and Lord willing, that will soon be published in a uh, peer-reviewed journal. So we are entering that into the academic record. So we're here digging, we find it, it's interesting, that's fun. Uh, then you get to learn more about what that represents for the back at that time, and then you can make a contribution to the academic world and put it into the academic record.